Tony is probably one of the top tutor. He is the top tutor in the country. Uh, his company is Tutors Inc. And he teaches, he tunes. I mean, he's just, he's a really, really smart guy and a good guy too. So good morning, Tony. Good morning. Uh, we've got, uh, we've got uh, some of our really cars and coffee people here. And uh, could you share maybe some of the top tips in tuning, uh, in tuning a Mustang? Sure. I mean, so I thought about this the other day and, and I was trying to figure out the best way to talk about it. I'll, I'll just talk about it in the perspective of the, the road racing stuff to begin with. Um, probably the, the most asked question of me of customers when they bring the cars in and they're doing the testing is what tuning should I do to the car to help me for performance, but also when I'm road racing? There's a couple of things that we can we can focus on. The, number five. The first one is. If, what octane you're running. The fuel is a primary concern. Um, if you're running E85, that's a concern. If it's running 93, if you're running 87, if you're running 100 octane, if you're running 110 octane, each of the gasolines have a specific stoichiometric ratio that we need to tune to. Uh, I'll give an example. If the car was a 2007, and let's say we were in 2007, gasoline back then, the stoic was 14.64. So all our tuning was based on that. Well, nowadays, everything's temperance and ethanol. So with temperance and ethanol out there, our stoic is now 1408. So right off the back, right off the, the beginning there, so we're six-tenths difference right off the base. So we need to correct that in the tune. And we have access to the fuel stoichiometric. If you're running VP Empty Squat or you're running MS-109, each of those fuels have a specific stoichiometric, and that needs to be set in the tune. So that's the first thing when it comes into tuning is what fuel are you actually going to be running? Um, and I know there's some limitations in some of the classes. I had a Corvette in here the other day that he could run 85 uh, in certain races and he couldn't run in other races. So we had to tailor two tunes for him. I set him up with a, an extra a tune on his MPI, MPVI2 cable so he could change it at the racetrack as well. So the next one is number four. They asked me, okay, so what kind of performance gains am I going to get in my road racing? Well, in the drag racing world, we're trying to get it there as fast as we can. In the road, road racing world, we're trying to get there effectively okay we want to be able to come out of the turns we want to get on the straightaway we want to get be able to hit that and not have problems so a couple of things we do a little different um and even ford did this with the boss 302s was actually putting in a little bit of idle hang so there's nothing like pushing in the clutch and it drops so far when you you know come off the the clutch again it actually unloads the chassis because you're against it so we actually put a little idle hang in our road race cars uh so as you depress the pedal it stays up so it allows you to pull it into gear without coming into there and downshifting and causing unloading of the chassis. I think Kenny mentioned that here a while back uh, as well. So that's the next thing we do on the road racing part. Um, number <laughs> number three. So one of the things that in the in the performance tuning is is how hot is the oil temperatures? And I think Kenny's talked about this before, and the oil temperatures are coming into play. If you're not running an oil cooler uh, on the dyno, I will intentionally put load on my dyno to run the oil temperatures up to see just how hot it's going to get. I can't simulate you running around the curves on the track, but I can usually get the oil temperature up pretty high to see where it's going to run. If it exceeds a certain amount, I, I personally think 205, 220 is starting to get too hot on the oil. You need to get an oil cooler on a car. That's a tuning tip that I would tell you right off the bat that you need to do uh, as your tuner or any other tuner. Most of them are not looking for your oil temperatures. Um, I do simply have data log several cars at Daytona, um, specifically a couple of GT350s and GT500s. Oil temperature becomes a primary concern. So that would be my third one on that one. Number two, what gear ratio are you running? Um, a lot of people forget that the gear ratio is the effective part of getting you there. If you're only using part of your power band and you're not in the right power band between it, you need to make sure the gear's correct. Uh, I need to know what gear you're going to run, set up the gear ratio in the rear of the car, effectively making your speedometer correct uh, so you know what's going on. And again, that actually works with the idle hang as well. Uh, number one, the primary thing we deal with. Okay, so in the tuning world, we want that extra 10, 15 horsepower. Sometimes the effective horsepower is only roughly from, let's say, a Coyote from 68 to 7,200 is peak horsepower. We can pick that up. Now, under the curve, if you're not paying attention to it, you could actually lose some of that horsepower and torque. Most tuners are, will actually pattern it for the peak horsepower. We need to keep it under the curve. 
under the curve is what you're going to feel when you come off of that curve or of the turn and you're getting on the pedal. So we want to make sure that the power band is all the way across the curve, not just peak. If you make, you know, an extra 10 horsepower at the top, but down below, it's only like one or two horsepower. It's kind of a waste of your money and time. You want it across the band. That's the most important part. Later model vehicles, we're using the variable cam timing to, uh, to control that. Uh, as well as, again, with the, with the right gear ratio to keep yourself in the power band the whole time. I kind of hit five of them pretty quick. There's lots of things to talk about. Those are the first five that I kind of came out with, and, and I know everybody has some questions here, so hit me up. Let's go for it. Well, Tony, why don't you, uh, uh, before we get, I, I'll have, I, I got the first question for you. Okay. Before we, go, before we get into questions, why don't you tell these guys some of your backgrounds? It's absolutely fascinating. So um, I, I, I came home from the hospital in 64 and a half Mustang. So obviously I was going to be the destined Mustang guy. Um, and throughout my teenage years, I was always involved in cars. Uh, bought my first Mustang was a 68. And actually the very first place I ever ran the car, believe it or not, was a road course. True story, automatic car. They had a, a, a Porsche club, had a, a little cone set up. I went out there, road raced the car. Um, obviously it didn't do very well, but it was fun. And I enjoyed it. And then obviously went more into the drag racing later on. But I went in the Navy. I wanted to be a heart surgeon. Uh, money wasn't there for college. So I went in the Navy to make the money and uh, fell in love with a passion. Uh, I tracked submarines for a living in the military. Uh, became a master training specialist, curriculum developer, uh, which put me in the mode when I retired in 98. I was full-time uh, tuning cars as well as I started teaching for multiple companies. So we've built everything from, you know, we had a Ford GT that we ran at Ford Proving Grounds with Gene Martindale and the whole crew out there. That was a pretty proud moment. Um, all the way to my normal customers every day, which people go on drag racing today at the track. And I just finished helping out a circle track guy, uh, or excuse me, a road race guy and his Corvette last week saved him from a catastrophic failure. So I've been around doing a long time. Uh, it's my passion. I enjoy doing it. Uh, I've been doing it 35 years, uh, tuning cars, uh, from, from carburetors and distributors all the way up. And every day, you learn something. And I tell people that if you're obviously you're on here with Kenny's thing, you know, learning as well. So every day we learn something and that makes our passion even better. So that's kind of where I came from. Okay. Well, I've got the first question. Okay. Here, here is the scenario we have in our shop right now. I just came in this week, a 2008, uh, Ford racing FR 500 S. Uh, those were the cars that were built specifically for the Mustang Challenge. And the irony is this is actually one of the three Speedworks cars that I engineered in the, in the, in the Mustang Challenge. But anyway, it's in here, and we're just we're doing – it's going to be a full Kenny Brown car when it's done, full suspension. He's getting a new rear suspension that we're going to talk about in weeks to come. Uh, front grip kit, rear grip kit, uh, JRZs, plus the, uh, the big – our super uh, – for our big brake kit. Anyway, I thought while it's here, let's let's you know give it just a little more juice. Uh, you know, we don't want to really go to the max and wear it out. We just want a little more juice. So uh, the direction I want to go because it's a Ford Racing product, I thought we'd put in the the uh, Ford Racing hot rod cams, the intake manifold, and the Ford Racing uh, 62 millimeter throttle body. It's already got headers and a cold air kit. Do you have like a tune in the books that would be close to that? Absolutely. That's the nicest thing about being able to tuning this long. And I store everything on Dropbox. So I have tunes all the way back to 97, Kenny. I have tunes all the way back. I have my Fox Body stuff along for everything too. So, and I pretty much have every software out there. So I keep track of everything. So I've done several of the FRPP kits. Um, the hot rod cams alone are worth about eight to 10 horsepower. They're more of a, an idle chop thing for people, but they do give you an extra ride, 150, 200 RPM with the FRPP intake and that throttle body, that, that right kit is basically like a 20, 22 horsepower gain right off the bat. And it's in the peak power where you're actually using it. Cool. Well, that, that, that's just, so what you're telling me is if some of our guys out there have some modifications to their cars, uh, if they call you up, you might have a tune in the books you could just send to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we've done it more than likely. We've probably done it. And if we haven't, we're, we're going to investigate and make it right. <laughs> 